So <clears throat> this is just another statement of, uh, of the general uh, problem of um, which covers online advertising, content of web pages and such. And um, we have users, we have the context, which is the overall environment, and we have inventory, the set of items that could, uh, we could display, or in the case of, say, Amazon, we could recommend that people buy. And we have these complicated metrics we wish to um, optimize, which at the simplest the total clicks, but really should be total revenue. And that revenue has to be total, integrated over a lifetime. Remember, Netflix wants some um, member retention, not members downloading movies today and then stopping. These are the issues that are brought together in these recommender systems, these different items, which are <laughs> which uh, are involved, which include um, media, movies, um, ads, uh, sorry, articles. We have um, advertisements, we have the users, and so on. We have the context, which are maybe um, whether we're coming from a mobile or a desktop, um, the, the value of social media, and um, maybe query keywords, defining the area we're working in. Then we've discussed quite a lot, the non-trivial metric to uh, um, optimize. Then we have the item pool. Um, in query, we're searching all web pages. Maybe we only have 40 top stories, and we just have to choose the best four, and so on. And sometimes we have ed you know, manual intervention, editorial selected material, such as um, in some web um, news sites, and the other times we have anything. That's the, in some sense, the, well, I actually do not know whether Google News has any editorial intervention to make certain you always get the top stories. Because they say in the past they miss sometimes the top stories. I do not know whether the fact that I've never seen them miss top stories means that they've improved the algorithm, or whether the editorial insists that you cannot miss the top stories. And we need to get um, uh, an appropriate diversity and also time limits. Namely, we don't want to keep showing the same old things to people. We need to give them new things if they don't like the old things. We came across those ideas when we discussed Netflix. Um, in terms of the context, we have uh, both pull and push, as it says here. Pull is an example where the user types in a query. So that user's pulling something from the web. Push is um, something which the web is pushing at the user based on what the web knows about the user, the session they're in, the page they're at, the history, and so on. Uh, we have feedback on what, what the decisions made. Um, you can get an immediate feedback by whether the user actually acts on what you do. If I go to that Yahoo page and then immediately go to um, CNN, uh, CNN or something, then Yahoo is very unhappy. Um, then that feedback is either immediate or it could be actually later, might come from a later analysis. And the actual volume of data can vary from small numbers like 100,000 per day to many hundreds of millions per day. And then we also have various um, business models which constrain us, uh, such as uh, the so-called diversity rules, the editorial voice, uh, some websites are notorious for being a little more favorable to certain political points of view than others, and so on. All right, so we need to do these things quickly, like in the um, user item interaction. That's the click through. And um, um, and of course, as, the, as this amount of things to um, learn and discuss and use uh, grows, but actually partly that's good because uh, I pointed out earlier, the fact that we have so much data is precisely why we can do a good job on recommenders. Um, 
I think you know, Netflix had uh, 4 million ratings per day. It's those 4 million ratings are driving the recommending engines, recommender engines. And if it had only four ratings per day, it would not be able to do any recommendations. So the scale of the recommendations is actually uh, critical. And in some sense, remember the, 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 the rule we had from the VP from Walmart, um, the more data, the better. So I actually think this is good, not bad, that the amount of data is increasing. We're going to get better, better results, and we're not going to increase the compute time. Because as long as the compute time is linear in the amount of data, it's not going to give us trouble. The problems which give us trouble are where the dependence on uh, system size is more than linear. Sparseness is an important problem we'll uh, discuss a little later on, namely, uh, if you have all these users and all these items, any one user is only going to know about a subset of those items, a very, in fact, small fraction of those items, which means the overlap, direct overlap between any two users is usually very small. And um, that's, um, that's an important constraint on models that work well. So here we point out in this first bullet about communities. And we already saw that in this lecture when we were discussing um, aggregating stores together. Uh, we need to decide what are good groups, and of course, people are like everything in this field. Most of it can be automated. You can find groups automatically. You can link people by their social networking connectivity. You can link people by their common buying habits and so on. So communities which used to be relatively non-trivial to identify, such as geographic, I mean, users in San Francisco were easy for anybody to invent. And, um, but, and indeed you can find, I know users interested in baseball aren't too difficult to, to find, just see who goes to baseball sites. But there are many hidden, hidden groups which can be identified with modern technology. And, um, you need to find the right size group. If it's too big, you've averaged over everything and lost the specificity, which will help you give good predictions. If it's too small, there's too much noise. Um, we also pointed out the web is so big and so dynamic and so online the whole time. We can do these A-B tests, which allow us to take any new algorithm and identify multiple um, collections of users and test it across a diverse set of um, examples. So this again describes the interaction between the various components. Um, we, have, um, we have all these features of our recommender engines, information retrieval, clustering, taxonomies, those are categorizations, profiles, clicks, um, what the people are doing, social networking stuff, these communities. Then we have um, Offline analysis, I mentioned that some algorithms actually take a long time, and you will run those algorithms. They can provide a base classification and organization, which then can be updated dynamically, because you know, updates are usually much quicker <coughs> than running um, uh, the, an offline ab initio um, classification. And if you have a lot of data, you can classify it. <coughs> in a long offline job, could take days to run, preferably just overnight. And then you can use it um, during the day interactively by just updating users by seeing how they fit into this classification determined um, in the offline fashion. So that's offline and online because the basic online response has to be less than a second. And you need to take many methods and interact with them. And uh, you need to do something because you have so much data you can't work with all of it. Uh, we will come and look at this, um, this slide in more detail in the following slides. It just uh, takes uh, the Yahoo homepage and shows how it's optimized uh, to decide how to um, take the various components and uh, um, choose what to put there. Um, here's this example I mentioned that, um, um, before, that we have a um, trade-off between um, click-through rate and um, 
value of those clicks. So if we measure utility per click in some fashion, which is to do with the um, amount of money the user spends or the amount of further exploration they do of the advertisements on the things they click through to, then it's certainly possible that one article could have a high click through rate, because it's a pretty exciting article, but has less utility than another article, because it's somehow, uh, maybe if it's too interesting in the first article, people don't look at the adverts. Or maybe the adverts don't match the article so well as the second article. So uh, the click through rate needs to be balanced with the so called utility for click, and it's the product that basically is what you're trying to optimize. And uh, obviously, uh, it's fine to lose a bit of click through if you gain in utility. 